Yeah, hi. Uh, okay. So good evening uh, and welcome to all our viewers and attendees who joined us today as the session is going live in our respective FP pages, YouTube and uh, LinkedIn. A very warm welcome to our Facebook audience and YouTube and LinkedIn viewers as well. So it feels amazingly wonderful uh, to see you all joining on this beautiful Saturday evening. So this is Swarna and on behalf of Pick a Book, I'm going to moderate the session for our lovely audience here tonight. So, okay, uh, great to see many participants, uh, you know, from participating and from different parts of the world. Oh, I would like to, you know, welcome you all for this series. And uh, we are extremely happy and delighted for the kind of love and support we're getting for our Flipkart series. And uh, thank you all. It's because of you all, you know, we get inspired to bring in new books and new insights into our discussions every week. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, please invite your family and friends as well to our sessions. And we'll be happy if you can extend your support by using social media handles and a host a watch party. You hashtagging us using, uh, you know, pick up a PAP global movement and hashtag I'm a reader. Spread the love for reading and let's all be proud to say I'm a reader. Okay, a quick recap for those of you who are new to pick a book. It's all about reading and more reading and inculcating the habit of reading, research and presenting the summary of it in our regular meeting sessions and creating a better world by changing the sense of self through the habit of reading is the vision of pick a book. Uh, if you want to know more about pick a book, find us on uh, pickabook.club and uh, we are there on uh, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn as well. Okay, uh, to show you all uh, some light on why we are all here today is that, you know, in a session like this, uh, which we call Flipside Series, we discuss books under various subject matters, you know, with our uh, eminent panelists across the world, uh, which will provide guidance, insight into our lives and, you know, wonderful takeaways. So today we have with us two wonderful authors, uh, Master Wangan and Asha Jamaldeen, uh, with their wonderful books life 101 and a road to billionaire so uh, i would like to introduce uh, uh mass uh, before we invite him onto the stage so mass is currently heading a uh, global training and development function uh, at etune uh, which plies its trade in technology consulting in sap space he is he has over 18 years of experience in human resource and talent management with uh, MBA in HR and project management. He is currently an MBA lecturer at the University of West of England external program and spends much of his time working with professionals on life coaching and skill development. So his core area is employment engagement and has developed a number of initiatives to keep teams consist, consist, constantly inspired. So Mars is an avid sportsman, uh, a long distance runner and uh, represented the uh, Arabian Gulf and Rugby Union. So the, it's a lot to know about Mars. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome uh, Mars onto the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Swarna, for the lovely introduction. Lovely to be here. And good evening, Thank everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure to have you with us. And uh, we would like to invite uh, the other presenter, the other panelist, and the author for today, Arsha Jamaldeen, is a banker. Uh, he's a fintech enthusiast, a lect lecturer in the IPM market here, a salesman and a certified transformational coach. Currently, he is holding a position as head of uh, deposit in a private bank. He is also the president of Rotary Club of Colombo Midtown and a key member of Banker Association in Sri Lanka. So with a beautiful introduction, uh, where well, we welcome you, Arshad. Thanks, Arna. Thanks a lot. Good evening, everyone. Great. So a very warm welcome to both of you once again. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you both and two others on the same panel as well. Thank you. OK. Great. OK, let me start with this uh, typical first question, uh, we, which is common why we are here today. Uh, so what is reading for you guys and why you enjoy reading? Yeah, anyone can go and I I, okay. I want to hear from both of you. <laughs> anyone can okay, start. Let, let, let me start. Uh, okay. For me, reading is uh, is part of my lifestyle. Uh, I read every day, and uh, mm -hmm. I think without reading, I I can't start my day. So it's it's basically just been part of my life. 
and uh, it's a, it's a continuous thing so it's like a prayer so it's, it's every day i i do reading so that's that's why reading is so so important okay so you, what about you ask, uh, why do you enjoy yeah. reading right so I, I, I my story is a little different where i was never a reader um i um never managed to complete a book um until i think reached the age of 37 and had never read a book until that time and it was quite astounding for me because I always wanted to read, but I never had the, the, the I never had the patience. But that is until I actually okay. joined this book club, Pick a Book. And once I did, I surrounded myself with like-minded people and I got into the habit of reading. So I inculcated that habit into my lifestyle. So as of last year, I read about 35 books for the year. And at any given point right now, it's wow. about three books. So for me, it's quite an accomplishment because I never had ever read a book before. And it, it, uh -huh. and it, it totally... And for me, the journey has totally been surround yourself with like-minded people if you want to make change in your life. And that's where I find myself today as well. So. Exactly. Very well said. That That's truly an inspiring one. You know, 35 books a year is not an easy thing. And uh, the, the, when the credit goes to pick a book, we are even more happier <laughs> because that is what is joining us today here uh, this evening. So, okay. So when did that spark started in you? You know, uh, if, if I have to ask you, Ma, so when did that spark to become an author uh, started in you? Like, it, was it your childhood dream or how was it? Yeah. So, yeah. So I always wanted to write a book even when I was much younger because I used to like creative writing and stuff like that. So I had it on my bucket list saying by, you know, by the age of 40, I would write a book, but then like I said, I'd never read a book before, so I didn't think I had the authority to write one if I've never read one. Uh, so first first step was to start reading. And once I did that, then um, COVID came along and I had a bit of extra okay. time as well. And I thought, listen, let's not procrastinate over this. Let's get into it and um, just do it. I, for me, it wasn't getting the perfect book out. It was getting something out because I didn't want to procrastinate for another 30 years. You know, so <laughs> that was the part that, you know, came about and why I, I, I released the book a couple of months ago. Uh, yeah, so that's my story for now. Great. Awesome. So how about you, Arshad? So was, was there in that was, you know, uh, uh, authoring a book is there in your bucket list as well? Uh, not really. I never I never dreamt of being an author at all. Uh, but of okay. course, I'm, I'm a reader. So uh, uh, like uh, Ma said, uh, I started my I started reading when I was 25, and uh, it was a continuous thing. But at a point, I thought, okay, I'm reading. I'm reading so much of books. Why not? Why not if I if I author one? So then uh, it was running back of my mind, and I was you know starting thinking what to what to write. I I couldn't pick the topic. I didn't know what to write. So this you know the the, the time was going on. But suddenly during like similar situation like Mars, uh, last year during lockdown, I sat and I thought, look here, I need to do something. Since I got extra time, why don't I write something about that I know? So since I'm a banker, worked for 20 years, so I thought, mm. so this is something that I should do to people all around. So why not I share my knowledge? Why not I share my experience with the people? On So it will be useful for people around. So that was the whole intention. So I put all my experience in 35,000 words and I craft of this book. So that's how, that's how I ended up being an author. <laughs> Great. So, so good to hear that. You know, in fact, uh, I think COVID uh, in a way is, uh, you know, a blessing in disguise for a lot of people out there as well, you know, in spite of uh, how dangerous it is in other sense, but, you know, it has uh, brought in a lot of talent out of the people and a lot of aspirations have been fulfilled for a lot of them. So, and we have, beautiful others here today who are just you know very common few months ago and uh, you know uh, the status has changed so all thanks to the crisis as well so it brings out the best in every one of us to think it as a positive note of course. Superb. Uh, okay so uh, mass uh, what motivated you to write this book and, yeah, and why so did you title uh, uh, this book as you know a life 101 right so so like I mentioned, I always wanted to write a book um, and I always wanted to write about myself because in for, my, for me personally, I've had a lot of ups and downs and a lot of different lessons that I learned throughout my life. But then I thought, you know, initially I was just about writing a biography, but I thought, okay, who would ever in, in their wildest dreams want to read about me? I mean, 
there's nothing much about me, right? But then I thought, listen, uh, 10 values have been really essential for my own growth. And I thought, listen, these are really, re I think these are really cool values. And what if I couple them with my own life experiences and showcase, okay, fine, this is what I went through. Um, and this is what I overcame as well. And maybe, I mean, I know different people may have different um, uh, challenges in their life. Uh, and it yeah. might be unique to them. But I think the teams are very similar. So the 10 teams I chose uh, in my book, I think are similar to most people, what they face. The experiences might be a little different, um, depending on you know what actually you went through. But I, I actually thought, okay, why not do something that relate to people? Uh, because right now, I mean, everybody goes through their difficulties, the challenges, and all of us want to be living the best versions of ourselves. So why not talk about that and, and, and talk about my journey? It's, it's far from a perfect journey. It's a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of different um, uh, trials and tribulations on my part, but I think if we share that common journey, we can gain strength from each other. And that's why I, I launched this book and I call it Life 101. Uh, it's no by no means the final version. It'll, there'll probably be a life one or two personally, but uh, okay. yeah, that's where that's where it's coming from, uh, Swarna. Great. So I wish you a long way in writing, uh, with you know many books to uh, many more books to come from your uh, writing. So great. So how about you, uh, Arshad? So what what is your inspiration behind writing this book, and uh, why is it titled Road to Millionaire? Well. Uh, during COVID, I believe you all would have witnessed that uh, the people who lost their livelihood, they're struggling. And uh, time, we have yeah. witnessed it big time. We have seen it very much, not only in India, not only in Sri Lanka, but it's across the world. It was common for everyone. And uh, that was a, that was a trigger, triggering point for me because uh, during lockdown, people were coming and knocking the gate. They actually, they were not asking for money. They were asking for, for a packet of milk. They were asking for sugar. They were asking for tea. Yeah. So, uh, so I thought, okay, see, I, I have time. I am reading. So that's how things got connected. So I'm, I'm a banker. So I have seen people who are rich. I have seen people who, who were rich and who became poor overnight. And uh, mm. we have seen people who have walked into the bank taking loans and then got trapped. And then you know, we have seen. I, ha I have come across all these people in my life. So it's a it's a hands-on experience for me. So then I thought, why? It's, it's it's my duty. It's my responsibility to share this knowledge with people. I don't think I can do a seminar on it. No one will be afford to do it. But only the best thing to put it on a paper, put it on a book, and distribute among everyone. Uh, so then people can keep it with them, and whenever they can, they can read it and pass the uh, pass the knowledge across to everyone. Because uh, money is also an essential thing. Whether we agree it or not, money is an essential thing. So it's it's, it's part of yes. our life. So people should be taught, they should, people should have the knowledge to manage money. Otherwise, they'll become slave of money. Instead of money is working for us, we'll end up working for money. And that's it. So end of the day, we don't money. get anything. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I want to put it on papers. I want to put it in a book. And that's, that, is what, that was the triggering point for me to, to draft this book. Super. So that's a very point. Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, brought it out because, uh, yes, maybe because of a pandemic, uh, you know, we have realized uh, the ups and downs of it overnight. You know, because of this pandemic, which which otherwise could have taken a little more time, but then uh, this pandemic has made us realize that you know, it, nothing can be permanent, and it can take it over a night. You can your lives can be changed. So so that's um, yeah, that's a pathetic thing. But then. Uh, uh, that's a good thing that you know uh, uh, writing a book or you know becoming an author is, uh, is a blessing for everybody not just the person who is capable of doing it uh, because you know you are spreading the knowledge and a lot of people is, is it's a kind of service I would say you know uh, because it, it's it's a help to a lot of people out there to have that knowledge which which otherwise they cannot afford to you know uh, paying uh, the universities or colleges or or researchers or anybody that my trainers you know to get all that knowledge but a book with just 300 pages and you know costing us very reasonable amount could give us a numerous amount of knowledge uh, they can lead their life with so hats off to the all the authors out there and uh, we're grateful to all of them and in the room as well thank you for both of you for such wonderful bricks uh, for bringing out such wonderful books for all of us
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, so I would like to, uh, you know, uh, go and grab these books and start reading. They are worth it. And uh, we are going to learn more about uh, what's there in the book, uh, you know, in the coming few minutes. So, yes. So, moving on to my next question, uh, uh, Mas, uh, like, you know, who is this book aimed at? Uh, is it intended for any specific set of audience or you want to uh, kept it open for everybody? Yeah, so I think it's it's open to everybody because I think in general everybody is trying to live the best version of their life. And um, what I wanted to do is, um, I mean, as, of, as they say, right, if you're not growing, you are dying, right? If you're not growing, you are dying. So I think it's really important that, you know, we reflect upon our own lives see where we can improve on, see what is limiting us um, and uh, what is uh, what are our glass ceilings or what we need to do to go to our next level, uh, how to find passion and a purpose in your life um, and how to overcome those obstacles and tribulations, um, I think most importantly, and how do we learn from those obstacles? Because what happens is, I mean, you can have done so much in your life, you could have achieved a lot, but life may have a different plan for you. It can get you down on your knees overnight as Arshad said as well, right? I mean, you can make a million, you can yeah. lose a million overnight. But yeah. um, if if you, I mean, you can either be crippled by that, but or you can learn from all those different challenges life gives you. And 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 one of the quotes that I mentioned in my book as well, life is one of our greatest teachers. So if you can learn from it, get stronger, uh, take those lessons and inculcate it into your life, you can live your best version of your life. And I think every single chapter in the book also has a different theme, but it talks about those lessons of how you can uh, tackle what life brings to you, uh, develop yourself, and and see exactly how you can take your life to the next level. So that's a quick synopsis of what it uh, what it talks about, uh, Swarna. Superb, great. So this book is open for everybody, you know, not just a specific audience. Like whatever you have covered, whatever you have mentioned, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, the life lessons out of your own experiences are pretty much, uh, you know, a lot of people can resonate in their lives as well. So, so great. Uh, okay, so uh, what is that uh, of first few process of writing a book, Arshad, uh, if you could share with the audience? Well, uh, there is uh, there is nothing as such uh, the perfect process. So everyone have their own way of doing it. But what worked for me was, uh, uh, or oh, I would, if you ask me uh, such a, as an advice, I would say first thing is to just to take the pen, take a paper, and just keep on writing. Don't think about what to write. Don't think about the topic. Don't think about uh, the number of pages or chapters or anything. So uh, the exactly. process would be, you should have a pen, you should have a paper. So that is the first thing to do and uh, keep on writing. And after that, you can key it on a soft, so, you know, soft form, like, you know, you can key it to a Word document and you can start editing after that. So the yeah. first process would be, if you want to write, just write. It could be anything. So at a point, you will realize where you are going and then you will you will take your right direction so until then just keep on writing so that is the first thing to do uh, and uh, when you're typing so you will realize that you can you can structure your book in such a way that you can divide into three or four so still you should not come with the chapters but then put in segments or three segments or four segments and then put your word document to those segments and keep it those folders and you refine it further and add more and more information if you want to and then after that take those segments and divide those segments into chapters so okay. so so the last part is is what you do in terms of naming the book so after looking at your contents you will realize okay now now let me find out a name for the book and then you to think about your cover page and so on so uh, i think that is a way to start that's that was my process that's what worked for me because if, if I start thinking about the topic of the book, I don't think I will write anything. So first, just start writing. The final part yeah. is that you think about the topic. So that's, that, that's, that's the process that I believe that's, that's what works uh -huh. for me. 
yeah so that's that sounds so simple <laughs> to hear but i know it's it's a kind of you know process it takes a while to do that so ladies and gentlemen just to start or you know to writing you just have to write it that's it so whatever is there in your mind so just put it in words on paper so that is the first and primary thing one should do so and then of course you can do a lot of corrections you can segment it and then think of uh, you know title to it and think of the images of back and front cover so everything comes later but the first part of it is just put your thoughts onto the paper so that's a simple way to start and probably that's the way most most of it works well so thank you arshad for that beautiful advices and you know uh, the role of it so and uh, Okay. Um, so, what is that uh, uh, most difficult part of getting this book out, um, you know, mass, uh, to make it available to the public? So, what is the biggest challenge you have faced? Sure. So, I, I think this is very personal to me because I wanted to get the book out by my birthday. So, I had a, I had my, um, an intention of getting it out on my 40th birthday, but I, I sort of procrastinated over it. So, I thought 41. Okay, let me get it out before that. So I was actually rushing to finish it um, a couple of weeks before my birthday, which was on the 17th of May. And unfortunately, we were going into lockdown uh, at that time. So I was like, okay, oh my God, how am I going to get this out on my birthday? But, uh, and then the printer said, listen, I don't think we can give it to you um, on time. It's going to take another couple of weeks. We don't know. And then there was a flooding as well. So our printers were closed also. So I thought, okay, what am I going to do? This is, this is not really according to plan. So what I did is I put it out on Kindle first uh, on Amazon and and a lot of people were really interested in um, in getting the book but then I really wanted them to get the hard copy for some reason. I, it's just it's something that I had in my mind, right? And it just got sure. delayed because of all these different external problems and hiccups that were happening and eventually came out I think only towards the end of July, beginning of August um, where okay. I had to get I had to get the proofs. Uh, get someone to read it again just to see whether the, there were any typos, uh, any any small mistakes. So I actually uh, that took a bit of a took some time and it eventually came out about two months later. So for me, writing the book, I had a deadline, so I knew I had to finish it by a certain date. I knew it wouldn't be perfect, but for me, it was finishing and getting it out rather than waiting for the perfect time. Um, so that's the way I approached it, and 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 for me, that was the most difficult thing, getting it out. On the deadline I had set for myself, but uh, as and and that's very typical of my book talks about. You know, you have a plan, and things go out the window. Exactly. You know, what to do? <laughs> you know, either you know, um, you either I can procrastinate and think, okay, this didn't happen, or get up, bounce back, and 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 get up stronger. You know, so I launched it in August. I'm really happy. You know, quite a number of books have been sold and and given out. So I mean, no, I mean, no hard feelings. Um, things didn't go according to plan, but that's life. I mean, that's what the book is all about, anyway. So, <laughs> exactly. So you're living the book <laughs> in a way <laughs> with all your challenges that came by. Okay. So, how about you, Arshad? What are your struggles uh, in this whole writing journey? Okay. Uh, first struggle was, I would say, uh, keeping the momentum going when it comes to writing the book. So uh, there are ups and downs, uh, there are other challenges. So it wasn't easy to write every day, but I, thanks to lockdown once again, I, I was able to finish it on uh, as planned. But there were struggles, there were hiccups in, when, when it comes to writing it and maintaining the consistency. On the other hand, like Ma said, uh, getting the printed version out was also a bit of a challenge for me because uh, finding the right proofreader was a bit of a challenge, and yeah. uh, it took it took quite a time, and uh, uh, that was the biggest challenge I would say because I don't know uh, who is the right proofreader, and I don't know what the proofreader whether he's right or wrong. So it was a bit of a bit of a dilemma. But then I have to take a bold decision and decide. Okay, let's go ahead and give the green signal for the printers to print. So that's how I ended up. That was a I think that was a key uh, uh, point I would say was the biggest challenge because you do all your hard work and you want someone to check it and give you a feedback and you have nobody to give you a real feedback and you yeah. get stuck you get confused and you get scared also whether to put it whether to release the print 
whether to launch the book uh, you sometimes you get scared whether people come up with you know yeah. uh, you know issues errors they will point out mistakes you you live with that for exactly. some time uh, and yeah. you need to break that psychological barrier and you tell the printer go ahead you print whatever comes let me face it so that that was a decision i took it was dragging for some time i took no let's go ahead you print it let me face it so there's been one year now so over and over and i have told me anything bad about the book so <laughs> i'm happy about it <laughs> <laughs> superb so <laughs> we cannot imagine life without challenges <laughs> it, it's True. it's a choice we make whether to survive or thrive uh, so that's a beautiful True. choice you both have made to survive to thrive um so in fact you know the more the challenges are the the better the product uh, that comes out so in a way you know positive note it's a good way of uh, having challenges in between uh exactly. yeah thank you so much thank you uh okay uh, coming to you mas like you have written uh, 10 different chapters that covers you know almost 10 10 important aspects of your life uh and, and you know added to that you have put the you know flavors of your own life into it So, if one of the chapters you covered, uh, you know, is is you know about uh, not limiting yourself to your beliefs. So, can you elaborate a bit more on this? Sure, Swarna. Uh, thank you for the question, and I think this is one of my first chapters in the book. So, I think as we are brought up, there are a number of different beliefs that have been put upon us, um, mainly through repetition. So, one of the examples I give in the book is um, my running, uh, and I. I'm a long distance runner as well. Um the longest I've done recently is the 50 kilometers over one day. But when I started off I couldn't run even a kilometer, right? And I and I asked myself why can't I do that? And I realized I didn't have an answer. It was something that I had automatically programmed myself by repetition that I believed I couldn't do anything more than a kilometer. And it was a glass ceiling which I wanted to shatter myself and last uh, march uh, i managed to do five half marathons in five days i did a 50 kilometers in, in over one evening and and i didn't i realized that you know where did i come up with this and 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 and, and it, the thing is it's so buried in your subconscious that you don't even realize it's it's not built on logic it's built on repetition um i mean just to give you an example i mean when we were growing up we would heard terms like money makes you greedy or money mix is the root of all evil or money make you know our money mm. money makes us happy but True. in reality money is not good or bad i mean if you are greedy before you have money it just amplifies it you have more money to greedy with but if you are kind and giving before money you have more money to give to the world right and more to help people that but because of repetition i mean you're meant to believe that and as you grow older you fail to attract money as well because that is something that you believe because you've been told so long by your parents your cousins your friends and and that's a limiting belief that you in in my opinion so my proposition in chapter 1 is look at your limiting beliefs what stopping you from going to the next level you know if you think you know you are at a certain level then that's all you'll go and and you need to eliminate that if you want to take your life to the next um you know to the next level you need to examine what is holding you back and push through so that that's what it yeah. talks about uh, swarna in my first chapter breaking through your limiting beliefs a oh, great Uh, that's a very very important point you have raised mars you know in fact through your book you're telling the audience but because uh see it, that is a root cause i would say a lot of people for everything for be it money or or you no know, the be it uh, you know our struggles or you know be it, be it the point of surviving or be it the point of thriving it's all about limiting our beliefs so we have grown up in certain environment you know certain circumstances where you know be it a family environment or um, be it a cultural environment or you know the the community influence or whatever like we have started Uh, you know a set of uh, beliefs we have built in so it's difficult to break them uh, but then unless and until you break those beliefs then you can't see the road ahead of you so that's very very important step to you know break down those beliefs and you know not to limit uh, anything uh, for that matter just uh, for the belief that you had so far So that's that's a great thing, and and uh, it's good to know that you know you are a marathoner. So you know that's awesome. Good. Uh, okay. So Arshad, uh, to you. Uh, so you know this this book greatly talks about uh, the financial 
struggles, you know, especially in this pandemic times like this, like how you have shared, you have seen a lot of lives turning upside down in just a night, in just one night. So what is that money leakage you are talking about in the book? And, uh, you know, how, how, how can one prevent it? And for that matter, if you can guide us how to smartly invest uh, and establish uh, multiple income sources, that would be a great. Yeah. See, uh, money leakage is all about, it's all about your behavior. There's something called behavioral economics. So your behavior, which causes you to lose your financials, lose your money. It's yeah. the wealth has nothing to do with how much income that you make. Uh, mm. you, you may be, maybe your monthly income would be 1 million. Maybe there is a man with a one monthly income of 10,000 rupees, but he may mm. be living a better life than the guy who earns 1 million bucks because yeah. he might have more loans and this guy might not have no any debts. So he must be living peacefully. So yeah. the leakage is all about your behavior, your lifestyle. So mm. if you are aware of what you are spending on, if you are aware of mm. your outflows, if you are aware of your behaviors, and if we can ask the question of whether really do I have to spend this money on this? How okay. am I spending it? Whether it's mm. really worth it? Do I have to buy an iPhone every year when there is a new version is out? It's the question that we mm. need to ask. Do I need to buy Perfect. an iPhone taking a loan? It's the question that you need to ask. So yeah. uh, it's all about your lifestyle and behavior. That's what creates the income leakage. So my book talk, talks about a very, very basic uh, approach. So what I say is based on your income, at least keep a 20% aside. Don't think about the 20%. If your income is 100,000, assume that your income is only 80,000. So plan your expenses, plan your lifestyle within that 80,000 and forget about the 20,000, keep it separately and use that and keep on saving and once you reach a certain level break that saving into portions because people okay. ask so what am i going to do with the savings what if i die tomorrow this is what everybody talks about but people who say who will die tomorrow they never die tomorrow <laughs> nothing happens <Yeah. laughs> so they keep, on, they keep on they keep on talking about the same issue but nothing happens so you save once you reach a certain threshold you take a 20% out of your saving and you spend for you. It's okay because you need to reward yourself for saving. You need to upgrade your life. That is absolutely perfect. There is no doubt about it. But don't just blindly spend your money. Always have a reserve with you. And I encourage at least if you can save uh, up to your one, uh, ex cover the expenses for the entire year. Assume that you lose a job due to pandemic. Right? And if you have a reserve to look after your family for one year, you actually are financially healthy because you are there, you have money, you have savings. Even if you lose your job tomorrow, if you can, if you have savings to meet all your commitment for the entire year, you don't have to worry about too much. But what I'm, what I'm, what I'm recommending is once you save, you break it into portions, you invest 30% of your savings in the stock market, another another 30% or 20% in the bank in fixed deposits, another portion, keep it keep it separately to invest on an asset, which can appreciate yeah. and give you a rental income. So uh, this, yeah. is, this, is what, this is what the book recommends. And also I speak about how smartly you make money out of the bank loans, because once you uh -huh. start working, uh, you okay. see the, the the salesman from banks will come behind you selling a credit card to you trying to sell a personal loan to you no he will yes. chase you so yeah you take a credit card i'm not saying not to have a credit card you have a credit card but credit card comes with good features which you can benefit out of it there are 50 yeah. you can you don't have to pay for 51 days so it's okay you use the card and purchase whatever that you want to purchase but don't Decide you are spending based on your card limits. Mm. Decide you are spending based on how much that you have in your savings. So yes, the banks will keep on increasing your limit, encouraging you to spend. The fundamental mistake that we make is okay. I have a limit of hundred thousand, or let me let me utilize the entire hundred thousand. But you have a savings only up to ten thousand. That's where you go wrong. And also okay. I encourage people to use the credit card on installment scheme. Okay, interest-free installment scheme is good. But if you can repay those installment scheme, go for it. Don't go and dump your entire money 
to purchase uh, expenditure stuff or well, just go on installment scheme that is fine but you pay it on time so you are making you are getting the benefit out of it so you need to make these debts which are offered by banks work for you and you should not work for the debts so credit card should work for you and you should not work for your credit card the loan should exactly. work for you and you should not work for your loan so that is that is the book that's what we talk about in the book Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, in fact, I've never heard anything like this before. You know, that's such a clear. Uh, just because you you are talking from bankers' point of view, so you have a clear cut idea on you know what to put, and you know that was a very well put. Uh, that's a great piece of advice for all of us. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you just uh, differentiate between your want and need before you want to spend something on that. So need is always good, but want is something you need to be careful about. Uh, so, however, how much ever you want, and just take care of it, and then smartly invest. So, like Arshad said, uh, divide the income. Like, too much of saving is, I mean, uh, you just, I mean, we're not asking you to uh, save everything you earned. At the same time, uh, you know, you cannot create your own leakage. So you have to maintain a balance between both of them. So smartly invest, uh, you know, enjoy the benefits and uh, don't misuse anything. Whatever is being provided, just don't get fall prey for marketing tactics. Uh, <laughs> use it. I like that advice so much. You know, being a banker, you openly said it. You know, credit card. Uh, you know, the limitations of credit card and how the best way of using a credit card and the loans as well. So use it. For what you uh, have chosen to use it, not what for what they offer to use. So, so very well said. On the beautiful note, uh, thank you so much, Ashad. It's so wonderful and so beneficial for a lot of people. So, ladies and gentlemen, these two books seem to be very, very helpful. Uh, one on a personal note, one on the financial note. So, uh, go and grab these books and uh, ha ha enjoy reading. And I, I think there's a lot of learning from the books which you can, all of us can implement and better it in our lives. So thank you so much for both of you. And uh, okay, so this is going to be my last question uh, to both of you. Uh, uh, and what is that one piece of advice uh, you want to give for the upcoming authors? So Mas, you want to go ahead with it? Sure, guys. Uh, so um, I think, uh, again, uh, stemming from one of the themes of the book, um, you know, if you really want to write a book, don't wait for the right moment. Very often in life, yeah. we procrastinate over so many things, waiting for the right time, waiting for the right you know, information, all these different things. But if you really want to do something, just take action. I mean, start doing it, start writing it. Uh, if you have to give yourself a deadline, but just do it. Don't just wait. And, uh, and, and this, is not, this is relevant to not only writing a book, this is relevant to anything in life. Because um, exactly. as Rowan, the, the famous management guru said, the richest place is in the graveyard because so many people take their dreams with them. Uh, you know, even uh, and because they don't practice that in their lives. So my advice is take action. You want to write a book, just go for it. It may not be perfect. It may not be, you know, the best version, but you can always improve on it. I mean, but you need to yes. have the first step if you want to keep progressing. So that's my advice uh, to anyone who wants yeah. to become a reader, uh, write uh, an author, sorry. Great. Superb. So if for that matter, that's a useful uh, advice for everybody uh, you know, who wants to be an author uh, or any anything else in life. So, you know, taking an action is important. Stop procrastination right now because that kills your life. Uh, you know, you can't do anything in life uh, with that one single word called procrastination. So whatever you want to do in life, it is only possible when you take the first step. So. So have that uh, courage to take that first step, uh, stop procrastination, have that strong mind, strong will uh, to take that first step and uh, you can see wonders happening in life. So don't always try for perfection. It's never, uh, perfection is mere myth. There is nothing called perfection. Something that is perfect for you may not be at all to, uh, you know, for others. So just, just don't go by that word called perfection. So just enjoy the journey, just enjoy that step you have taken and uh, the journey uh, you have made to you know uh, go through that uh, thank you so much mas for that and uh, how about you arshad so what's that piece of advice from you to aspiring authors well, uh, or anybody well being an author is not a not a rocket science i have to be straightforward 
uh, I of course thought it's a rocket science, but it's it's not. So after yeah. after <laughs> launching my book, I realized it's not the case. So uh, <laughs> anyone can become an author author at at any given time. You don't have to you don't have to wait you don't have to wait until you get twenty five years or thirty years. At any given time, you can be an author. So if you if you want to write something, just just start it. Just start it. Don't think about anything, and make it part of your day-to-day -day task. So allocate a time. Maybe I would say the best time time is to allocate is the morning, when your when your yeah. mind is fresh. At least spend about an hour or one and a half hours on a daily basis, and you will see, you will gradually you see after a month or two months you will see that that your creation is is taking life, and that is a very very emotional. That's a very a uh, very good feel it gives you a lot of happiness when you see that uh, day by day when you spend about one and a half hours and after one month or two months you see that your creation is taking life uh, that was the happiest moment and uh, i think uh, that is the best way to start don't just wait anyone can be an author uh, at any at, at any given point in your life so just start just print uh, uh, launch the book print about 50 copies or 100 copies just let it go out it's okay because when when we when we author a book, we don't think about monetary values. Our intention is to share our knowledge with people. It's not to sell. It's not to be a millionaire. I don't think I will become a millionaire by selling a book. Uh, but it, the, the whole intention is to share the knowledge and help people out there. So someone will get benefited from it. That is that's yeah. the whole intention. So don't wait for it. Very. You're trying to do something yeah. good. So just just start it and do it fast. Yeah. Perfectly said, uh, Arshad. So, in fact, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, without taking that first step, everything looks like a rocket science. So, <laughs> when you take that first step, then then you feel regret that why have I thought, uh, you know, it, it it was a rocket science. So, you know, you feel regret about it. So, it, how come this is so easy? Like, like how Arshad said before, he uh, uh, you know started writing a book. That was his uh, feeling. You know, so many negative thoughts over there. Uh, you know, I can impress people or whether this book will be out on time and things like that. But if he hasn't taken that first step, we wouldn't have been here today and uh, his book uh, hasn't been out uh, by now when people started reading it. So it's all about taking that first step. Um, stop procrastinating, take that step and uh, don't think of the result. Uh, enjoy the journey and uh, the fruits, uh, the results of the fruits, whatever, they are bound to come. So beautiful and uh, a great uh, of uh, those learnings from you both. Uh, thank you, Mr. Maz and uh, Arshad for joining us today. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have two authors on the same panel. It, it's wonderful, you know, the first of its kind we have done. So we are very happy doing it again. Uh, so that was a great learning. In fact, two books uh, talking about two different aspects, but then, you know, how, how well they are correlated, you know, such an important aspects of life. Um, so yes, uh, those important lessons, you know, uh, uh, you know, one talks about uh, you know the quality of life, and the other talks about the financial fitness. So which are both going hand in hand. So beautiful. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it from our panelists today. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing your valuable uh, insights and from the book in your own words. Uh, we absolutely loved every bit of it. So without wasting time, ladies and gentlemen, grab these two books. They seem to be very, very, very useful and worthy going, uh, uh, reading them. So I wish you good luck. And uh, yes, thank you, uh, Maz, and thank you, Arishad. Great having you with us tonight. Thank you, Swarna. Thanks a lot. Thank you me. so much. Thank you. Have a great thank weekend. You. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being there here today. And uh, we really appreciate that you all took time from your daily schedules to be to watch us live uh, in our social media pages. So Pick a Book is all about reading, uh, read more books and gain more wisdom, share more knowledge, and encourage everybody else to read uh, around you as well. So that's a great source of inspiration for all of you. So thank you so much. If anything you want to know more about Pickabook, please drop us an email at admin uh, at pickabook.club. So and uh, bye-bye. See you all again next week. Thank you. Take care from Pickabook.